One of the big tools, one of the best tools that we have in numerical methods is what's called iterative refinement, as opposed to a direct method. So, so let's just let's just compare uh, a direct method uh, to an iterative method real quick. A direct method, what happens, let's say we're finding the, the roots of an equation and you get halfway through. You only get halfway through and then you have to stop. Uh, whatever happens and you have to stop. Halfway through you have the wrong answer and it's all the way wrong and it's way off. It's not even going to be close to the right answer. However, if if you're using an iterative method, right from the start you have an answer. If it be step one, uh, you, ha you have an answer, you, you take that answer, you, you do some work and you refine that answer and you get closer and closer and closer and closer to the right answer. And if we plot progress here, when iterative methods we say uh, maybe this is the goal Right, this is the goal state. Uh, with an iterative method, we sort of start wherever we start, we get closer and closer and closer to the goal. In terms of in terms of actual numerical values, right? Where with a direct method, uh, we the, the situation is a bit different here. Let's let's get another color. We'll do direct method. If we plot progress in a direct method, as I stated, uh, our progress here. Uh, let's say this is our start point. And, and this is our goal, right? Goal. We do a direct method. We we start. We go do 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 do. We're not closer. We're not closer. We're not closer. And then when we finally, when we've performed the final step of the calculations with the direct method, boom, we meet the goal. And that's the difference. Uh, one of the differences between a direct method and an iterative method. Well, it just so happens that because of this nature of iterative methods. Uh, we could also we could also make a plot of what happens with error uh, at the same time here. Let's let's uh, with an error we could say we could plot out error. Come on. In other words, so we have let's say uh, and this is this is value perhaps value that's the true value. And, or 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 whatever the goal we'll, we'll just call it the goal instead the goal and the, the, what happens with error as our computations go forth error let's let's get a better color here error decreases and decreases 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 right um, so uh, what we can do here let's let's scroll down a bit here. What we can do then is we can introduce uh, that we can we can leverage the the definitions that we used for error to define a stopping criteria. An iterative calculation in the book they give a general formula for an iterative computation. And that is given uh, on page 60 in figure 3.3 uh, but basically the idea of that is uh, is you start, you have this do loop, right? You have this i, uh, we have this function, we'll call it iter, iterative method, and we have uh, the value, the starting value, and we have the, um, the stopping error, es, and that's what we're introducing now. The es is, that is the error uh, below which uh, we're we're willing to stop. If the absolute value of the approximate error is less than this, we're willing to stop. In other words, uh, we have this. We we defined epsilon a and epsilon t, right? Uh, although epsilon t is is a nice thing to have, it's not incredibly useful because we don't know it. But epsilon a we do, and so uh, if we we say well if if epsilon, if epsilon a, and that's the absolute value, right? Because we we don't care what the sign is, is less than the stopping criteria epsilon s, then stop. We're close enough, 
we're close enough and and that this is this is the essence this is the stopping criteria that's that's in the iterative method we can go ahead and finish it here if you want uh, e e s max it okay that's the other thing that we introduce sometimes uh, we may not be converging we may not be getting closer to the answer maybe our error is increasing and and we may never get there because that that can happen with a numerical method so the other thing that we'll do is is we'll we'll insert this parameter for max number of iterations where uh, if, if we've done this say uh, 10,000 times and it's a, that's just too many uh, and we need to stop so we say uh, we're we're gonna let uh, I uh, be the number of iterations say I equals one uh, and our solution right our current value of the solution uh, that's just our starting value and then we we say uh, the approximate error okay when we start out we just set that to some some large value maybe maybe 1000 uh, who knows it doesn't matter as long as this is much larger uh, than than you're willing to tolerate as long as EA is is larger than ES then then we're good uh, then we 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 have this do loop Right, we have this do loop where where we have the old solution, the old solution uh, is equal to the solution, and that's just that's just a uh, here. Let's let's scroll down here. Uh, the uh, the old solution is equal uh, to the solution. This this just uh, gets it the solution is equal to whatever this is where we this is where we do fancy stuff where fancy stuff is actually what we're going to talk about for most of the rest of the semester <laughs> so uh, we do fancy stuff here and we come up with a better value of the solution and then in the subsequent in the subsequent steps, we just say, uh, as we said, if I'm going to do this in a different color because I really, really want to to highlight this, if uh, solution is not equal to zero. The approximate error equals the solution minus solution old over the solution times 100. I don't know if that's going off the page or not for you. I can scoot over. Uh, times 100 and then so this is the computation and we have to we have to make sure the solution is not zero so we don't do a divide by zero here uh, if that's true uh, then uh, then then we if this is true then we we set our approximate error to that and if approximate error is equal is less than or equal to uh, our our error that we were willing to, to live with uh, then and and we we should have absolute value uh, signs around this because because all we care about is the absolute value of, of the error then uh, or um, or I is greater than or equal to uh, max it. If this is true, then we exit. That is our stopping criteria. Okay, uh, uh, and then so so then we have this. We just just finish this up. That was the meat of it. End uh, do, and then. Uh, We we output the solution, uh, 
output is um, and, and our output is uh, the solution okay and we we have our value hooray we're done